it's Louise Havala and you're watching Gatehouse Insights. On today's episode, I'm joined by Jennifer Petruni, QC, and Angela, who is a barrister at Greens List. Jennifer and Angela, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to begin with mentoring. Jennifer, you've had, you've mentored approximately 20 junior to senior lawyers. Can you share your experience with mentoring? Yeah, well, they, they never get away from me. Um, and I think it's probably more than 20, but when, when I take on a mentor, a mentee, it's a, a lifetime sentence, you know. <laughs> um, and, you, you know, it, it, I find it really rewarding. Uh, it's a, it's a two-way thing, you know. It's, it's really interesting. I sort of keep tabs on them. I, I think my oldest mentee is, I think I've been mentoring her for, I don't know, 10, 20 years. Um, and, you know, they, they started off as graduate lawyers and now they're partners of law firms, you know. It's wonderful to be able to watch their career as they go through and also to be able to be there for them. So, so even though some of them are partners of law firms, they know that they can come to me and I have their best interests and only their best interests at heart. So, you know, it, I, I do see it as a sort of a lifetime thing and very rewarding for for me and I think, you know, that I think they find they learn from my mistakes and believe me, there's lots of mistakes I've made to learn from. So, so I'm a wealth of information in that sense. <laughs> Jennifer, how do they, I suppose, find you and approach you to, to be their mentor? Well, I remember Angela came up to me, we were at a tax uh, seminar and uh, had, had you started at the bar when we I first met? I started. I did come close here, Jennifer. This is how I record. See, the, I, I want to talk about this because, um, you know, they're, hopefully they're viewers who are very well qualified to be mentors and I just want to set the scene for them in terms of when a mentee wants to approach someone. So I uh, studied Jennifer's wins in the High Court. I've worked with her cases and here I am at the bar my first couple of months, I think, and he's the real person at a, I think it was at a dinner at a, function and I was just getting closer and I just wanted to go and say oh, I was so nervous I knew everything I'd read about her and um, I was just summoning up the courage and then Jennifer very kindly turned around and said hi my name is Jennifer Petrini <laughs> <laughs> so that that itself just uh, opened many doors for me it was okay it, it set the tone for the dialogue like it was um, it's 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 an open two-way thing you know it's it's not what I had maybe wrongly imagined, which is someone who is so senior, so highly regarded up on a pedestal, who juniors like me, who, you know, how am I different from Bar of Soap? You know, Jennifer could well take that view and no one could say anything, you know, criticize her for it, but she didn't. She took the exact opposite and reached out her hand to, to greet me and say, welcome to the bar. And I remember you saying, you know, um, I've got my uh, law library in chambers, you're welcome to come and use it. All those things just made such a huge difference and it was so welcoming for for someone brand new to this new institution, organisation, I don't know how you call the bar. Mm -hmm. Seven years, it was yeah, a month. it was in my first few months that yeah. that, that exchange took place. <laughs> and it's been so successful. Why? What, what do you think? Of, why do you think it's been so successful? Well, I, from my point of view, um, Angela is a fabulous junior. I mean, she's just I. I uh, I did, I did offer some help at the beginning, as, as she said, but but it's turned into an, an advantage for me because Angela is my favourite junior. She writes well, she researches well, uh, she does everything brilliantly. So you know, it's worked out a win for me. Um, and I think I think Angela has has learnt, as I say, from from my mistakes. You know, if, and I try and introduce Angela into. Um, you know, into the tax discussion groups and things like that. So, um, just to have an introduction, to be able to introduce Angela in, sort of, rather than trying to cold call people. I think that's that's worked for both of us. I think. Yeah. It's. It, it, I, I pinch myself <laughs> um, about the experiences that I've had. Um, not so much from Jennifer's mistakes. It's more, more from. You know, Jennifer is at the level she's at because she's that brilliant and she takes the time to train me on it. So, um, you know, you can imagine that someone with Jennifer's schedule might just say, change is change, I'd go just do it. She doesn't, she actually stops to say, I've made these changes because, and that allows me to learn. Um, you know, I'm, you know, so grateful, so extremely touched to hear that, you know, I'm somehow useful to you, but everything I'm able to do is because Jennifer has taught it to me, you know, like it's, 
learning as I go. I mean, um, it would be very silly of me to try to say that I knew all this before I came. I didn't. <laughs> I came to the bar just hoping that I could do my best and learn some things and have some great experiences and all of these things have certainly come true. Um, certainly uh, on the technical side, um, that's only one aspect though of what I learn and see from Jennifer. Um, there are a lot of practical day-to-day -day things that as a brand new barrister coming to the bar, I just have to learn how do you do, how do you operate. So what I mean by that is um, how do you deal with a difficult client or opponent or judge that said something that really puts a spanner in the works, how do you deal with that on the spot right now? Um, really complex legal issues. How do you approach it? You know, like, yes, we all went to law school, yes, we all come with some experience before we come to the bar, but not at the level that, you know, by the time you want to brief someone like Jennifer, it's pretty tricky, like, otherwise you wouldn't go to the um, in that level of the tax silks. Um, and also, the what I see is next to impossible time challenges, and I see Jennifer just take it on, head on and just as, as march through it. Now what that means for me is like I see that and then I go back and obviously my matters are smaller and less complex. I'm, I'm learning the ropes but when I encounter a challenge, um, I would I, I've seen how Jennifer deals with it. So at my miniature level, I can apply the same and I can you know learn to soldier on or do I need to uh, time out and ask someone, do I need to approach someone like Jennifer or maybe someone in a different field, whatever I'm working on and knock on the door and say, look, I've tried to knock this out but I need a bit of help. So just just seeing all those things. Um, may, may I continue? <laughs> There's so many things. Um, then there's, so, so um, to me the number of aspects, so there's the role model side, like um, watching how she runs her practice and also because of Jennifer's incredible achievements, she is like a shining light to not just myself but many others like I, I, no, I come to the bar and I, I think well if you work hard and you work smart it's possible you know that the you know people speak of glass ceilings or, or whatever and Jennifer smashed them <laughs> by a mile so it, it doesn't it doesn't stop my thinking I know I know a sequences of how hard Jennifer works and I know it's, it's not a smooth but it's not handed to you on a platter but what I see is that it is possible um, and then uh, on, on the tricky days, maybe when I'm doing something on my own or you know I encounter difficulties and I know that um, Jennifer's only a phone call and email away. So I know that when I, I feel like I have been kicked in the teeth, then I, I usually sometimes drop her in line and just say, look, this is what happen what's happened and I feel you know terribly down and um, Jennifer always comes back with just encouragement and support and it could just be, it, it might just be a sentence, just, just, just those words that I needed to hear at that moment to keep going and, and not give up. Yeah, and the final thing, and I will shut up, sorry. <laughs> not normally the leader speaks and the genius stays <laughs> I've taken oh, this opportunity. <laughs> um, the, the glimpses of how the senior legal world operates is what I get to see through uh, hanging out with Jennifer, if I could call it that, like just by being around her. Um, you know, we work together on matters, um, we, we have, you know, um, you know, lunches or coffees or whatever the case may be. She does what she does and sometimes I'm just there and I just, just get these little snippets and it, it's certainly for me to, to look up to um, and, and to have all of this as my day-to-day -day life. It, it's, to me it's bigger than my legal practice, it's, it's my life, it's part of what I get to see and part of what I love about what I get to do. So thank you. <laughs> How often do you, hang, uh, do, do you see Jennifer? Um, if the matter is on, it's it <laughs> almost <can't> every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're also um, on a number of, I mean, not, not so much in, in the current period because of Jennifer's presidency at the Victorian Bar, but outside of that, um, we're on a number of committees together that Jennifer's recommended to me and it's um, certainly it certainly pays dividends. Now it, it's not necessarily because oh you're on that committee you came three times last year here's a brief but it just oils all the wheels you know like uh, when I go to a you know Jennifer and I both practice in tax predominantly um, when I go to a, a function or events or something like that or if my name does pop up as a shortlist of junior for a case or something, these people have somehow heard of me, known me, seen me, etc. So I don't know when that might pop up and it's never expressly um, ex uh, explained back to me. Um, mm. But it, it, it does put me on the scene and it never hurts to be put on the scene um, <laughs> under Jennifer's wing. So, you know, going to a meeting and saying, I'm here as Jennifer's alternate, normally, you know, it's, it's a good start. <laughs> it's a very healthy start. <laughs> Angela, what do you want to take away from Jennifer? 
there's been so much, but one that will sit in my heart forever is how she reached out to me and what she's done for me and continues to do for me and my gratitude for that and that I have no means to repay her. So it's about how I could pay it forward. So, so what is really stuck in my mind and what I try to do as much as I can, even at a junior level every day, is how can I extend that opportunity, that possibility to someone else. So for example, at my level, it might be um, a, a, a law student or it might be a, a recent graduate, but what can I do for them? How can I pay it forward? Oh, what have I learned from Angela is so organised. Um, you know, the minute a, a solicitor will send us an email saying, you know, what we're thinking of doing this, this and this, within minutes, Angela will come back with a draft email for me to review uh, to respond to the solicitors. Now, how good is that? Um, a a Angela uh, uh, is, is very, very organised and her work is excellent. So um, I've learnt that much from Angela, to be very organised. Mm. And Jennifer, how do you assist, I suppose, your mentees in transitioning to life at the bar? Well, uh, that's an interesting question because a lot of them haven't come to the bar. Um, so some do, I've got uh, one of my mentees, uh, as I said, is a, is a partner of a law firm. One's up in the, uh, working for one of the land councils up in Northern Territory, uh, in Queensland. Um, one of them's in the Environment Defenders Office. A, a lot of them, they've gone all, all around, all different fields of endeavour. Um, and that enriches my experience as a mentor, because I, I can hear back from them as to how their careers are going. Um, so far as the bar is concerned, I say to them that the bar is the best career you can ever have. It is fabulous at the bar. Um, there are no timesheets, there are no budgets, uh, you're self-employed, effectively you can work when and where you want to, um, and you can schedule in your holidays. I don't think Angela does enough of that, but um, you know, it, it is a fabulous place to, to, to work and to be. It's, it is a, a, an enormous family, it's like a college at the bar, and uh, we look after our own at the bar. Um, and uh, I, I couldn't, I, I, it was five years until I came to the bar after I'd been a solicitor at what is now Ashurst. Um, and when I got here I thought, gee, why didn't I come sooner? And I didn't come from a family from the law. Um, I, I, none of my family, we didn't even know a lawyer in my family. We're a family of school teachers. So it's not like, you know, daddy was a judge or anything like that. And I'm sure it would help, you know, if you had a lot of contacts, you would have been the same. And I think that's why Andrew and I resonate so much, is that we share that experience of, of not having, you know, a blue blood legal family that, that you can sort of build on their legacy. You've got to start from scratch. But having done that, I think we're bo I've, we've both done it very well. But, but hard work and networking. You know, that, that's what gets you there. Mm. I want to move on to cultural diversity because it is a, a big topic in the legal profession. Angela, I want to start with you and I want to, I want to see if you could share your experiences and challenges at, in law coming from an Asian background. Yeah, sure. Um, I was born overseas, I was born in Hong Kong, and um, my family migrated to Australia when I was still in primary school. When I completed high school, I uh, did a commerce degree and uh, started working at an accounting firm and no one was surprised about that, that was completely <laughs> within the norms. Um, there was uh, a, a huge um, interest and curiosity inside me about the law um, and I decided to, to study law and then uh, moved across to a law firm, so private practice being solicitor, that was still okay. It was when I decided to come to the bar that I think um, was starting to be, be a bit of an unusual step. And so uh, some interesting comments started to come through then. Um, I remember a friend who um, is a lawyer said to me, but you don't look like a barrister. And this was very shortly after I signed the bar role. And uh, also when I um, meet new people, so for example, other lawyers at a CPD or something like that, I, I received comments like, um, you're the only Asian female barrister I know. So it, um, it, it strikes me as, uh, a, a need to change perception maybe, to, to broaden out what people might think when they imagine a barrister. 
What are you doing now to, I suppose, change people's perception? Um, I actually try to um, speak and attend as many events as I can. Um, not so much for myself and for those who already know me, but just to get the image out there. Um, th there's a story that has really stuck with me, and that was when I heard about a, a high school student um, attending a careers night with her parents. Um, and the careers advisor said to them um, of the daughter's aspirations to be a lawyer that will you come up because you're Asian and female. And that hit me pretty hard. Um, and uh, I have since then decided to use my physical being as a rebuttal. So <laughs> if I can get out there and if people can see me, then hopefully they will know that that is not an accurate statement to make, that it, they're not the boundaries for what makes a lawyer or not. Do you feel that there are a number of issues that may prevent Asian legal practitioners from succeeding at the bar or within the legal profession? No, none. Um, there's absolutely no reason why um, an a, a, a barrister of Asian origin, origin or Indian origin shouldn't succeed at the bar. Um, you know, I'm very disappointed to hear that these comments have been made about, about Angela. Um, you know, I, I find that Angela is, is the best bar junior barrister that I have been able to find. And to me, the fact that she's Asian is neither here nor there. Now, I understand that that, that doesn't address the issues that you've been facing, but um, there's, there's no reason that they should not succeed. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed to hear that, that these things are being said. The Victorian Bar does have an Equality and Diversity Committee. We're, we are trying to address these issues. So on our website, for example, there are photographs of Asian barristers. Um, and in, indeed in our bar offices, I think there's a nice photo of you, Angela. Um, I so it's to request a, that name, that room to be named. <laughs> <my> name. <laughs> yes, so, the, you know, the, the, it, it is, you know, it's... It, it's something that, that can't be done overnight, but, but having that sort of imagery around to make it, to reinforce that, you know, that, that there, sh there, you know there should be no reason why they, they shouldn't be treated exactly the same as us. And I just want to pick up on a point about like, it's, it's not just Asian or female, it's, it's diversity across the board to me. So, um, you know, I, I can sit here and quite comfortably talk about my experiences coming in the form I do, which is Asian and female, I hope that my comments um, can be considered in the context of um, all sorts of cultural backgrounds, um, gender, sexual preferences, or um, any, any other form of diversity that, that uh, people come in. And uh, to me, it's an important issue because if you uh, consciously or unconsciously uh, block out uh, certain characteristics, I suppose, you're cutting out the talents. You're just simply reducing the pool. And, and I think um, that's something that doesn't benefit the clients or whatever issue or matter it is that you're trying to serve. Do you think that, um, I suppose, especially for graduates coming out from uni and going into law firms, do you think that they have a belief that they won't succeed because of their background, whether that be Asian, European, or let's say Indian? Oh, you've probably had more experience in that area. Uh, Angela sat on our the Victorian Bar our Student Engagement Committee. Yeah. Are you still on that committee? Or no, I've sat down after. Yeah. Yeah, what are their, their thoughts? Um, look, it may well be mixed and it may well depend on who they've come across in their past. So, um, if I could um, make a comparison to when, um, you know, a as a practitioner and then coming to the bar, and seeing women like Jennifer achieve the heights that she has, I, I, I come to the bar and I don't think gender is an issue. I'm not saying that there's no issue there, it's just from my lens. Um, I, I, I practice predominantly in tax and there are some very eminent tax judges on the bench. So tax silks, tax judges, a female, gender to me is not a hurdle, it's not a hindrance. Like it may well present challenges, um, but it's not a blocker. Now. Um, imagine a student coming from maybe different experiences and different backgrounds and say in the context of an Asian female, if, if there's a student that's Asian female and they look to the senior ranks within the legal profession, there's not much to see. And, and that's probably an area that will take time but probably is worth addressing so that they do see those role models out there 
so that they know that it's not a, a barrier. And you're a perfect example now. <laughs> so I'll do what I can. <laughs> and the bar also has a lot of Indigenous uh, mentoring uh, policies as well. Um, uh, we, we don't have um, enough Indigenous barristers, uh, but certainly um, there is a, a fund there to support barristers when they come to the bar and we um, work with the judges in the Supreme Court and the Federal Court to have a sort of a, a cadetship type program um, for, for encouraging um, Indigenous law students to come to the bar. So, you know, the bar is, is, is working um, so that we try and um, tell the world that a, a barrister is not necessarily um, a, a white elderly male. <laughs> Do you see any, I suppose, obstacles of um, people with Asian heritage going to the bar, from your experience? Oh, well, I, I'm, H was I, there any I have no experience in that. Very fortunate for me, I didn't think about it. <laughs> I, just <laughs> came, <laughs> I just came and gave it a shot, so, um, you know, had I overthought it? maybe or I may have been stopped at other challenges about coming to the bar. Um, I don't think anyone says coming to the bar is easy, it's, it's rewarding and it's challenging but no one says it's easy so I could have been stopped at sort of cultural diversity challenges or gender challenges or just the self-employment challenge or how would I get work challenge so it could have been any of those factors. Have, Angela have you faced any I suppose challenges being briefed by like let's say law firms? Um, because of, let's say, being from an Asian background or being female? Not to my knowledge, um, and I think my experience might be a very fortunate one. I, I can't speak for everyone else. Um, I am very fortunate to work with people like Jennifer, and I'm not sure that you would accept a comment like, um, no, she can't be our junior because no. of the cultural background. I'm not sure. No, well, I, won't, I, I can't not. imagine no. that conversation being had. No. Um, that's not to say it doesn't happen, and also, um, you know, uh, Unconscious bias is a uh, hot topic um, these days and it's something that I would never get a grip on so no one will call me and say there was this brief but uh, <laughs> we thought about you or didn't thought, think about you because of the way you appear, <laughs> you know. Um, it's, it's very hard to tally. The former Chief Justice Marilyn Warren um, is well known for saying that when she was at the bar um, she received a brief that arrived in her chambers from a, a, a big law firm um, and then five minutes later the partner rang and said sorry Marilyn, wrong gender and took the brief back again. So you know, we, we, <laughs> uh, that, that obviously was a long time ago and I would like to think that such overt discrimination would not happen now but you don't know what you don't know. So um, I, I don't know how many times um, there's been a list of barristers put forward and my name has been overlooked because I'm a female or because I had small children. Um, you don't know what you don't know. But we do know from the statistics that uh, women are not being briefed in their, the same percentage as they make up at the bar. Um, we are working on unconscious bias. We think that is a big thing. So if you are not like me, I will not brief you. And, and because people, because it's unconscious bias, people are not aware that that, that filter is being applied to, to who they want to brief. So it's, it's education, you know, we need, to, we need to get people to understand, um, understand it. And once you understand unconscious bias, you can take steps to, um, to go around it. Jennifer, what else are you doing with firms to help overcome that un unconscious bias? Well, um, the Victorian Bar has a, a, a different system to the New South Wales Bar. We have clerks, um, so each clerk has a hundred or so barristers, and um, the clerks are well aware of who are their brightest and best barristers. And so we're encouraging the law firms to use the clerk as a filter, and, and the clerks are aware of unconscious bias, we have trained them on that and they will put forward the brightest and the best. And guess what? Guess who the brightest and the best often are? Not always, often. Um, it, it's the women. Um, so, uh, you know, I think if solicitors, instead of going back to the same old male silks they've always briefed, if they go to the clerks and ask, who is the talent at the bar? Who are the up and coming bright young things? The clerks will do the right thing, I'm, I'm, I'm 
pursuit of that. Jennifer, have you seen it change over the last you know, 10 years? Uh, I don't know about the last 10 years, but certainly when I started at the bar, um, it was very much an old boys club. Um, it, that has changed a lot. There's been a lot, of, I mean I've been at the bar for uh, 27 years now, so that, that's a long time. And it, you know, just to give you an example, we, we have a, a members club, our club, which is called the Essoin Club. Um, when I started, that was a, a, a club that was the top of the floor um, in, in Owen Dixon East. Um, it was a dark, smoky place and there were blokes sort of lining the bar and you had to walk past the, this sort of um, cattle crush to get into the, to, to the club. You know, that's totally changed now. The new, the new club is open, it's airy, um, it's like a cafe. Uh, and, and that's sort of indicative of the, the way the whole bar has changed, you know. W when I started there were hardly any women at the bar, hardly any women judges. Now, you know, again, we're not equal percentage, but it's, it's ordinary. It's ordinary. It's normal to see women barristers. It's normal to see women judges. So things are changing and um, I, I don't think it's time to be complacent. I think that we need to keep, keep working on this. Um, and, and we do with our um, diversity committee and as Angela said, it, it's not just women these days, um, there, there are a range of diversity initiatives that we're undertaking. Yeah. Jennifer, do you train, um, I suppose, undertake training diversity with men as well? We have um, male champions of change at the bar that's been um, headed up by uh, President Maxwell from the Court of Appeal. Um, so. Look, most of the men at, at the bar are, you know, sensitive new age guys, you know, they've got, a lot of them got daughters who are at the bar. Um, so we, we do undertake training and we will continue to undertake training. And, and it's, it's not just sit down and listen to this lecture type, lecture type training, it's, it's training in, you know, the message, the culture, the environment. You know, we, we, it's, it's leadership, you know, um, under my leadership and I know under the leadership that's coming through, we will be promoting a very inclusive environment um, so that people of all walks of life will feel welcome and at home at the bar. So that you, whoever it was that said that you can't come to the bar because you're an Asian to, the, to that student, we're hoping that that will, that will no longer happen that it will be normal to see Asian barristers, it will be normal to see women barristers. So we're working very hard on that. How long do you both think before that, that change happens? Ah, uh, well, you know, it's, I can't give you an exact time, um, but it's not, a, it's not an overnight process. You know, it is a very iterative process and it requires a sustained long-term effort. And looking at, at who will come through the bar, I know that that sort of leadership is, is ingrained in the Bar Council um, and that you know, we can look forward to that process continuing. And I think it's a process that can pick up momentum because the more you can get in terms of cultural diversity out there seen, um, the more it normalises it and no longer becomes a talking point and that's what I hope for. Mm -hmm. Angela, can you share some words of wisdom for I suppose females and with an Asian background coming through, either whether that be in the legal profession or coming to the bar? I'd say go for it. Um, be prepared to work um, very hard and, and very smart. And by that I'm referring to the networking um, uh, uh, activities that, that Jennifer's spoken about. Um, be seen, be out there. Um, and, and combine those two and just um, also um, seek out and uh, work with the guidance and advice that you get. Um, you know, in the, in the event you do stumble across someone who's not supportive for whatever reason, think of very much, move on, find someone who will guide you, who will support you and thank them and hang on to them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Stuck with you for life. <laughs> the life sentence is yeah. this way. Um, and uh, don't, I, I think, don't, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Jennifer, anything, any lasting comments? Well, as I say, hard work, that's number one, hard work, network. Yep, that's what it is. Jennifer, Angela, thank you very much. Thank you, Louise. Great to thank be you. here. Thank you. <laughs>
Now we would love to hear from you. What is the biggest insight you're taking away from today's conversation? Comment and share below and let us know. If you like this episode, please subscribe to our channels and share this video with your friends. And thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time on Gatehouse Insights.